What is this about? This is really important because in some ways this is kind of the heart of the course. You need to understand it. You need to understand it now at the beginning. Okay. Here's the idea. Remember this off. What it means um, to cultivate your ability to think in mathematically abstract terms is to be able to do this. I had this, this is not original to me, I had this explained to me by a really excellent university lecturer and I'd love you to write it down. It is to think deeply about simple things. To think deeply about simple things. Here's what I mean, okay? Um, we're used to seeing, you know, problems that start simple and then they get more complicated. And we are used to thinking of more complicated things as harder. Classic example. If I said to you, this is, you don't have to write this down. Um, if I said to you, okay, what's, um, what's one plus one? We can manage that. That's okay. You're like, one plus a half. I can manage that too, right? This is slightly more complicated because, you know, at a, a certain point in time you knew what numbers were, but you didn't know what fractions were or how to work with them. Okay. But I can keep on making this more complex, right? I could say, well, what about this? What would this be equal to? Now, you can still do it. It might take a bit more time. What if I kept on going? Like, you know how I did my series before, right? So I take a simple idea and I just make it more complicated. I'll make it harder. Or I'll give you another one. What's the first word that comes to your mind? Pythagoras. Either five or Pythagoras. Both valid. Okay. So you look at this, you're like, I can make that out. But I can make this harder. I could do something like this. And you're like, oh, I can still do it, but it's more complex so it's harder. Right? And on and on and on. Okay. Now here's the idea. Here's, here's what this is about. Right? The hardest things in maths are not as they get more complicated. The hardest things are when they get simpler. I'll give an example. I've done better. <laughs> this is the simplest geometric shape that exists. You might disagree with that, but actually there's a big hundreds of pages long mathematical proof for why it is. It's called, and you should go look this up, you can write this down and look it up later. It's called the Poincare Conjecture, French guy. Okay. This is one of the most difficult, gnarly, knotty, unsolved problems of the 20th century. Right? To prove that, a circle is the simplest shape. You're like, what's so hard about it? It's such a simple shape. Well, what happens when you think about, I mean, this is, how many dimensions is this picture that I've drawn? It's two dimensions, right? What would it look like if it was in three dimensions? I'll try, I mean, you know, something like this. <laughs> look, ta-da, it's a sphere. Okay, right. Same shape, more dimensions. It's still the simplest kind of shape that exists in three dimensions. What would a four-dimensional sphere look like? Okay, now we're having trouble, because we don't live in four dimensions. But the Poincaré conjecture says, in no matter what number of dimensions you throw at it, four, five, six, 27, if you're interested in string theory, it's still the simplest shape. It's a simple thing, but if you think deeply about it, there are profound, difficult problems in it. There are other things, right? Like, you know, the, um, the distance that defines this is the diameter. Right? But then, of course, there's the other distance which is important to this. Not the radius, but the circumference. circumference, right? Okay. But we all know what the relationship between the circumference of a circle and its diameter is, right? What's the relationship? It's, it, we call it pi. It's a number. And you can recite what the number is, right? But it's a, it's a strange number. It's a weird number. It breaks all the rules that other numbers follow, right? It's a simple thing, but strange things emerge from it when you think deeply. I mean, you don't just say, oh, it's a circle. Cool. Don't just do that. Think deeply about it. Now, here's how you do it. And I'm going to give you two guides for how to think deeply. And this is what you want to um, keep with you and refer back to over and over again for how to do this, because you're not used to it. Okay. Number one, you want to say, why? Why is this the case? Why is it true that this number is so unusual? Okay? And then you might come up with an answer of some kind, and then after you get an answer to that, you need to ask this question. Well, why is that true? Right? And then you know, 
you know, little children, if any of you have younger, hands up, younger siblings in the family. Yeah, how old? How old are we talking about? Um, 11? Um, yeah, young, 10, 10. <laughs> any, any like four or five? Four or five? Yeah, okay, so you guys will know, right? They hit this spot, and maybe you remember this if your siblings are older now, where they, they'll just follow you around. And they'll be like, hey, 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 and they'll, they'll just tug at your pants. And be like, why? Why this? Why that? Right? And you're like, man, you are so annoying. I've got things to do. I've got, I've got, you know, YouTube music videos to watch, and I don't want to answer questions. Okay? But they're very important, and they're valuable. Right? Why is the sky blue? Who knows why the sky is blue? Because, because it, it, it refracts light in some way. Well, why does light refract? And then why does... You get my point. Ask it and don't stop asking. We're used to either not asking or after a little while sort of shutting up the voice in our head like we try to make our little siblings be quiet. But don't. You need to listen to it again. Okay? And pursue the answers. Here's your first technique for thinking deeply about simple things. The other thing is, think about what if. Okay. Now, there's lots of things that people will tell you you cannot do. Okay. Um, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, and so it's like, well, what would happen if that happens? But you don't know, and you will never know. But in maths, you can always know, right? What if you've got numbers, right? Numbers like, say, here we were, here we are over here. Okay. What is this equal to? Actually, no, don't tell me the actual number. How do you work it out? It's the square root of what? Of uh, 3.2 squared, right? Plus 4.8 squared. And you can chuck that in the calculator. If you're really brave, you can try and do it in your head. I just made the numbers, so I assume they're pretty bad numbers, okay? And off you go, right? That's going to be a nice number. What happens if this number underneath here is not positive but negative? Right? Now some people will say you can't do that, right? You, you can't you can't take a like what what number what number can you say that's equal to that will give you back a negative number when you square it? You know one two three fractions negative numbers doesn't work. You you, you can't do it. But what if you could? Right? What if you took a number like that and you gave it a name and then saw what happened? Right? Now, we, we call these um, imaginary numbers. And when you put them together with other numbers, the numbers you're more familiar with, like, like 3.2, um, we call these the complex numbers, right? Now, it just so happens, but it took decades for this to come out, it just so happens that um, imaginary numbers and complex numbers, despite the name, they're just as real as any others. And they follow the same kinds of mathematical rules. But it came from some crazy guy saying, well, Stuff you guys who say you can't do it. What if you can? Right. Now, just as a side note, um, some of you picked up. There are some um, there are some inconsistencies that come out when you think about this thing, right? For instance, one of the lines in my proof, one of the early ones, was this. Okay, and then we got what was on the right hand side. You remember this, right? Now, people said you can't do this. You can't do it. You can't just, we, we sort of whip them around like they were normal numbers. And you can't because they're not normal numbers. They're going forever and they're weird and crazy. They don't follow the rules. But what if they did, right? And then these kinds of things emerge, right? These two questions, or are these two sets of questions, right? They will guide you through thinking deeply about simple things. Okay, and that's what's going to help you cultivate your ability to think about mathematically abstract things. Okay?